much fun as it is to design your own 3D printing projects, sometimes it's fun to use someone else's. So there are several websites out there where people who have designed things post what they've designed so that you can just download it and print it out yourself. So we're going to look today at how to do that. For example, this little Yoda guy is really cool, but it would have taken me forever to figure out how to design him myself and I probably couldn't have done it and he probably wouldn't have looked this good even if I tried. So uh, it was really nice to just be able to download someone else's work, print him out and uh, hang him on the Christmas tree or whatever we did with him. So we're going to look today at how you can find a cool file and print it out yourself. So I'm going to be saving my files to the SD card. So first I need to come over to my printer, find my SD card here, and then click to release it. Then I can pull it out. And this is what I'm actually going to use to save my files. Now, most computers do not have a card slot where I can insert this. So I'm going to need to use the adapter that came with my printer. So the adapter is white and it looks like this here. It has a cap on it, so first I'm going to remove that cap. And you can see this is the USB port and that's where I can stick that into my computer. So the first thing though, I need to insert the SD card into this slot. So I'm just going to press it in there, like that. Now, there is a right way and a wrong way to insert that card. So if it doesn't go in easily, you might need to flip your SD card around. Now I've come over to my computer and I need to look at the different slots on there and I need to find the one that has this symbol on it right here. That's the USB symbol. And I'm going to insert my adapter into that plug. And now my SD card is in my computer and ready to have a file saved onto it. So the first thing I need to do is to go to the web so open up a web browser such as Firefox, Internet Explorer, or Google Chrome, and type in the address bar, www.thingiverse.com. That's where we're gonna be downloading our file from. And uh, there are other options on the web. There are several other websites out there that are dedicated to 3D printing files, but Thingiverse is probably the most common. So that's where we're gonna start. Now, when I open up Thingiverse, I'm going to see several projects right off the home screen. I can begin scrolling through those just to see if I find anything that I like. But most likely, you're going to want to come up here to the search bar and search for something that you want to print. Now, my family just watched the uh, Crew Dragon launch into space, and so I want to print out a Crew Dragon. So I'm going to type that in and search for it. Now Thingiverse is then going to show me some files, if there are any, of things that other people have created and uploaded that have to do with um, Crew Dragon. And so I can see there are several options. So I can scroll down until I find one that I like. Notice that a lot of people show their models already painted. Um, and I can see different colors and different renderings of the models. I'm gonna choose the first one here. So I just click on it. And now I can scroll down. Uh, there are different pictures that allow me to see the model in different formats. And so I can see what it would look like printed out in different sizes. Uh, it's totally up to whoever created this to determine what pictures are available. So you'll just see whatever picture someone may have posted here. Now I can also scroll further down and read a summary. It's always a good idea to read the summary. Uh, they, these will give me a lot of important details about the object, so I can make sure that it is really something I want to print. For example, I don't want to print something out and then find out, oh, I needed six specialty screws in order to make this work, and I don't have those, and so now I've printed it out for nothing. So be sure you read this, uh, it also gives you ideas about whether you need rafts, whether you need supports, what the best resolution or infill is. Now, sometimes uh, these uh, values are not accurate, 
For example, I probably don't want to fill to print this with 0% infill. That would be nothing. Um, but it does give you some idea a lot of times as to what good settings for your printer would be. Another good thing to do is to read the comments. Uh, and so these are just people who have tried to make it. And um, they have a lot of times will tell you uh, if the print didn't work out or if it did, what changes they made. And that can help you get an idea before you print it whether this is going to be a good print or not. Because just because the picture looks cool, if you see on here that 350 people have tried to create this and no one has been able to successfully do it, then you probably know this isn't something that you want to waste your time on. You also want to be sure as you're looking at this file how large it is. Keep in mind how large is it? How difficult will it be to print? Does it require any type of assembly? And this is not to say that you should never try a difficult project. Just be sure you know what you're getting into before you get started. Okay, so once I've looked through the summary and the comments, I'm ready to actually download the files. So I'm going to click on this button here that says Download All Files. Now, you'll notice in the background you'll have an ad pop up. And depending on your browser and the computer you're using, you may have another box like this one pop up. You just want to make sure you choose the option to save the file and then click OK. So after it is downloaded, I now need to find that file because it probably downloaded it as a zip file. So if you're using a Mac, you want to go to Finder. If you're on a PC, you want to find Windows Explorer, whatever program you use to access files. So I'm going to click here on Finder. And then I want to click on the Downloads folder because that's where it saved it. And I can see here that it was saved as a zip folder. That's because there are multiple files in there. And so I'm going to double click it in order to unzip it. Now, if it doesn't work to just double click it, you may have to use your unzipping program that whatever you have on your computer. But you need to get that file unzipped so that you have a folder instead of a zip file. I'm ready to import my file into my slicing program. So I've opened up my slicing program here. I am using Prusa's Slicer. You may use a different program. If you do, uh, the buttons may look a little bit different, but the process should be almost the same. I'm going to click here on File to Import and select here Import. Import STL. Now I need to find that file that I just saved. It's going to be under my downloads folder, and mine is in the folder SpaceX Crew Dragon uh, Files, and I want to choose the STL option. So the SpaceX Crew Dragon.STL, and then click here on Open. Now I'll see that displayed on my printer plate. I might need to make some adjustments here. So I want to check the layer height. Right now it's supposed to print at 0.2 millimeters, which is considered normal. So I'll keep that. If I wanted it to print faster or slower, I could choose one of the other options. So draft will print faster. Detail will print finer. I want to choose what type of filament I'm going to be using. I almost always use PLA, so that's what I'll select. Uh, if I have a variety of printers, I can choose an, uh, a different printer there. I need to look at my file and make sure uh, if I need support or not. It doesn't look like this one will need any support. There's a little bit of an overhang, but the printer should be able to take care of that without much drag. Uh, so I'm going to leave my supports at none, but if you did need supports, you could adjust those. The infill, I'm going to leave mine at 20%. This just tells how dense the object should be. So if you want an object that's more solid, you want a higher infill. If you want to use less filament, you want a lower infill. 20%, between 15 and 30% is about normal. And uh, then I'm going to look down here and I have a few other options. I can change the position on the plate if I have some reason that I want to do that. I can rotate it, so if it imported in an orientation that's not the one I want to use for printing, I can use these rotation options to make it lie flat or flip it upside down, whatever it is that I need to do. 
And you can see if I click on those, it shows me which direction it will rotate if I change those angles. And then another option I have here is the size. Right here, it shows me the size in millimeters. It also shows me the scale. So if I want to scale it up or down, I can change those numbers. I'm not sure whether I want to or not, so I'm going to find out. I'm going to click here on the Slice Now button. And you'll see that my object is now a different color, which means it's actually sliced it into the different pieces. So I can see down here that I have uh, used 29 grams of filament, almost 30. That, that would cost 60 cents and that it would take about three hours and one minute. Now, I don't want it to take that long, so I'm actually going to scale it down. So I'm going to come up to the scale factors here, change that to 75%. And now it's going to make a smaller version of my crew dragon. So if I hit slice now again, it will reappear and it'll be a smaller version. And I can see now that it would only use 14 grams of filament, cost 28 cents and take me one hour and 49 minutes to print, which is more what I had in mind. So I am good with that. And now I am ready to export my G code. So the uh, printer itself actually reads G-code. So I'm going to click here on Export G-code. And now I need to figure out where to save it. So remember back in the beginning, I inserted my SD card. I need to find that now, wherever that is on my computer. Mine is still called No Name because I have never given it a name yet. And so I'm going to click here on the option for No Name. I want to check the title of my prints, make sure it's something that I'll recognize. You can change it to whatever you want to. I usually leave it what it is as long as it has a recognizable name. And now I'll click Save. The G code file has now been saved onto my SD card, so I am ready to take that SD card and put it in my printer. But before I take it out, it's always a good idea to click on this Eject button down here. And that'll just make sure that everything's done before I take the card out of my computer. So I wait just a minute while that ejects. Then I'll get a notification that unmounting was successful. So I can click OK and now it's safe to remove that SD card. So now I'm going to take the SD card out of my computer. And I can remove the micro SD card and insert that back into my printer and I'm ready to go.